Sofian Amrabat continues to be the heart of the talk for Manchester United as we count down to that final Premier League game of the season away to Brighton. It is expected that several centre-backs will be returning, meaning Casemiro will be freed. Now, what is exactly Eric Ten Hag supposed to do? Should he bench Amrabat for the mighty Casemiro or should he devise means of keeping him and playing them both? Welcome to the United of Sport. My name is Webb. Here is, uh, of course, a preview of our game. I'll be looking at uh, my, I think, the decided uh, starting 11. You can give me your opinion about, ab about it. This is what I think. But also giving you some quick news concerning Amrabat still because he could stay not at Manchester United, but in the English Premier League. Do you know why? Because according to The Sun, now The Sun is not the most credible source to many, but when it comes to Manchester United, The Sun has broken some stories, by the way. So I think they've got good contacts inside Manchester United. This is coming from them. Uh, they are saying that two Premier League clubs, that's Crystal Palace and Fulham United, have sent their, uh, their, their scouts to monitor Sofia Namrabat, the, and they have been impressed by the game against Arsenal and the game against Newcastle, like we all have been. So they are planning to approach Fiorentina when he's done with Man United. If Manchester United decide not to keep him, they will be approaching Fiorentina to pay the nearly 20 million pounds that Fiorentina will value him at. So he could see himself staying in the Premier League, perhaps not at Manchester United, but owing to his two good performances, someone might be saying, oh, you're, uh, one man's meat is another man's poison. Your poison is Fulham's meat. It's Crystal Palace's meat. So that's exactly uh, what we're hearing. But before we get into him staying at United or not, it is now to, to, to see whether he stays in the starting eleven with Casemiro freed and released from the central defense. What does Eric Ten Hag do? Honestly, for me, I think the one it would be so uh, so strange if Eric Ten Hag immediately drops Amrabat to the bench because of Casemiro, unless he has dropped in levels completely. Uh, in the in, in the training sessions, perhaps the one today and the ones we've not seen, which I, I highly don't expect because I think he should be one of him and Ahmad should be two of the most motivated players in the Premier League now to work hard and do everything right. So if all factors constant, Amrabat is fit and Eric Ten Hag would, would always have wanted to have this, this selection headache and indeed it is coming his way, perhaps a little too late, but uh, it's never too late for you to make a right decision. For me, I'm, I'm thinking Eric Ten Hag needs to adjust a bit. The two remaining games are almost similar opponents in terms of how they play. They both, be, they both beat, us, uh, beat us in the uh, past meetings we had with them. So what then does Eric Ten Hag do? Approach these games almost the same way to try and limit how much they come at you. Pack the midfield. And by packing the midfield, it means you are creating space for your two best players currently in Amrabat and Ahmad Diallo. Now, how do you create space for them? One, if Lisandro Martinez and Rafael Varane are both, uh, are both back in the central defense, or uh, uh, Lisandro Martinez and Victor Lindelof, because Varane and Lindelof uh, are, are, are both believed to be uh, ready to return, if, if they, are, they, are, they are back and Casemiro is not going to have to suffer again as a center back, don't bench Casemiro, because Casemiro is equally important. But that does not mean because Casemiro is a very important player, immediately you drop Amrabat because they play in the same position. No, creatively find ways of accommodating the two of them, but also your other best players in Kobe and Bruno and Ahmad. Now, for me, those are the, the, the players, the names that are not subject to debate. Amrabat, Kobe, Bruno, Ahmad are currently not subject to debate. Those must be starting. So as a manager, how do you then creatively, because these are the players you want to build the team around, how do you then creatively accommodate your two good solid players because you're facing an attack-minded team? That's how I came up with that shape. So play your back four of your Bisaka, Dalo on the right, Lisandro Martinez and Varane, if they are, you know, back or Martinez and Lindelof, or whoever he would wish, or Lindelof and Varane, remember, whoever is, he deems fit, release Casemiro from the middle, let Amrabat stay as the one shielding the back line, then have two number eights, Kobe Maino and Casemiro. Then in front of them, have Bruno and, um, and, and, and Ahmad playing either side of each other. Then Hoyland up top in what looks like a 4 3 2 1. I've seen Calanchelotti play this formation before at Juventus when he had uh, Zinedine Zidane. I think he had uh, uh, a pillow in there. 
he had some good players. I think he's the first manager I remember seeing play for three to one, and he accommodated some of his best players in there, and it win it, it, it won him games of football. I've seen, I think, at times, uh, Mikel Arteta has played a four three two one. He had just adjusted this team to a four three two one, depending with Declan Rice, Thomas Party, uh, this uh, captain Odegaard. Then he has you know, two up top, uh, two uh, on, uh, in front of them, and one up top. It is a creative formation that gives you control in the middle. And I know that managers today are so you know, fascinated with the width. But you see, the width that United has uh, coming from Ganacho lately does not make sense at all. But also, before you think about width, think, think about the opponent and what do you need to do first if you're going to have a chance against the opponent. Now, we know that with Manchester United, against the two teams we are going to face in Brighton and Manchester City, the smartest way for us to approach them is to try to catch them on the counter because they will certainly dominate possession. Brighton will dominate possession. Man City will dominate possession. How then do we have a chance against them? Compact the middle, let them have time on the ball, but be compact. Now, what gives you, uh, you know, that, that compactness is you're having a, an Amraba who is disciplined to sit and shield the back line. But then ahead of him, you've got another natural holding midfielder in Casemiro, but who can give you more when it comes to transitions because Casemiro can make quick passes going forward. He has that instinct, that Brazilian attacking instinct in him. He can go forward when he has to. Kobe Maino, the same, can open up people going forward when you win the ball quickly. He can play a good long pass. Casemiro too can play a long pass. Bruno is there as well. He can indeed uh, shoot from a distance. Hoyland is a good position, uh, good positionally. If we win the ball quickly, Hoyland will be in the right spaces to try and wait for maybe a deflection from a, a Bruno Fernandes shot or a pass from Ahmad Diallo. Ahmad can you know, stretch them, take them wide, bring them in. Bruno as well can stretch. So there is, I, I think that there is depth in, in this uh, starting eleven because these are players who can give you everything you will lack for not having a winger in Antony and a, a winger in, in Ganacho on this side. Because Ganacho, in any case, has been United's, one of United's is weakest links in the past games. But if Eric Ten Hag sticks to his guns and keeps doing the same thing over and over again, regardless of the opponent, again, it will bring questions again. The same questions will come that, okay, we know that you've got your style that you trust in, that you want to impose on the players, but your style cannot be cast in stone. It should be able, you should be, a manager is supposed to be uh, create flexible to create things depending on the op that the opponent and what you want to achieve with the opponent especially if your style is not dominant you know if you're pep Guardiola, whose style can be dominant against any opponent you're way ahead of everyone you can suppress every other uh, opponent with your style it can make sense for you to stick to your guns but with man united and eric ten Hag, it is a whole different story his single pivot formation has not really dominated games never even when you've got a fully fit squad it struggles to dominate games. So what then do you do? Accommodate your best players because in any case, with the opponent we are facing, it's a blessing for us to have Amrabat and Casemiro both playing in the middle at the same time. So that's for me, uh, my honest take, that yes, the selection headache is there, but I'm interested in seeing how Eric Ten Hag creatively plays with these players because the obvious thing for Eric Ten Hag to, to do will be to either bench Casemiro and keep Amrabat, if Amrabat is impressing more, and uh, but again, that's extremely difficult. So he will either be, bench one of the two. That's the obvious thing. Bench Casemiro or Amrabat. Play one holding midfielder uh, in the number six. Uh, then have Kobe and uh, and and Bruno up top. Then Ganacho on one side, Am Ahmad on the other side, and Hoyland up top. I I find no cre creativity in that. I find it doesn't change a thing. It doesn't. You don't see the impact of having these centre backs coming back. But also you don't see a manager then adjusting to the opponent, which I think is extremely important. One of the things we've been beaten at is that we've been one-trick ponies playing the same way against all opponents who take time to study our games in videos and find the spaces and creatively find ways of exploiting them. Brighton will be as meticulous as they can come. And if they beat us 3-1 in, in, in the reverse fixture, well, this time at home, it could, guess, it, it could be worse if we do not plan for them. There has got to be a certain level of respect. Eric Ten Hag needs to come down and stop over-believing in his style that has failed to convince any, anyone that it's dominant as he wants us to believe, but just adjust and manage these last two remaining games 
like your life or your job dep depends on them because indeed i actually think his job depends on how he handles these last two remaining games especially the rep cup final but you see we will be playing this F this uh, brighton game with one 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 eye focused on the FA cup final and for a smart manager a smart team will be making use of this game the last game the game against brighton to warm the players who have not been playing for so long up for the game against Manchester City in the FA Cup final. Now, how he approaches it should give an idea of how exactly Eric Ten Hag is planning to approach Man City because their styles are not, you know, far from far, far from each other. They are close to a similar style. They are both dominating possession possession based teams that pass the ball intricately and with finesse and pan, uh, 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 with finesse and panage. So he has got to creatively find ways of trying to handle his team based on his best players. That's my honest take. If that doesn't happen, we might be battered, and what that would mean might not be good for Eric Ten Hag. My name is Webb. This is the United Hotspot. So, Sofian Amrabat, for me, should stay in the middle, partner with Casemiro, Kobe, and Bruno. Subscribe. I'll catch you later, fam.